but let's talk about the differences um, these words are constantly used interchangeably right and i think it's very important to define words right so we have network marketing we have yes. direct sales and we have multi-level marketing so i'm going to take some notes and i'm encourage the audience to take notes as well these are three terms that you're going to hear at some point in your life right it's basically like yeah. household names nowadays and really since covid i think it has really exploded where people were forced to find an opportunity to make money because they were not working at their quote unquote secure job that they thought was secure. COVID hit over two years now. People have started side hustles, side gigs, online businesses, and then a huge portion of people joined network marketing companies, multi-level marketing companies, direct sales companies, really without, you know, doing the homework, educating themselves. Yeah. And uh, with the with the amount of mistakes that you've made, I think you can really help a lot of people prevent from falling into these pitfalls or traps, so to speak, um, and, and really be more effective with their dollars. So let's dive into that, just defining those three words, network marketing, direct sales, and multi-level Yes, you hit it right in the nail. Like uh, a lot of people don't get educated. When I stopped with, got tired of trying the MLMs, um, I stopped for a while and I continued to study. And also I, I made notes because every single one of those 10 deals, I learned something. So I made notes of things like, dude, that doesn't work. Okay. Uh, and, and, and certain things I'm like, okay, I like this. I want that. So made some notes, um, differences. Okay. Network marketing is kind of the umbrella, right? It's network marketing. You're marketing by networking with other people, which is something most, um, entrepreneur do right we'll go to chamber of commerce we're networking right we're trying to create connections and we're gonna market through that connection so network marketing is kind of the umbrella you know many companies they're financial companies that have a network marketing structure where the agent can sell policies but he can also recruit other agency uh, agents um, there are some real estate companies that encourage that if agents recruit another agent, they will get an override or whatever that agent sells. So, you know, that's in general, that's network marketing within network marketing. There are direct sales companies that focus more on reselling products. There are lots of people that that's all they do. Okay, and I'm not going to mention names uh, just out of respect, but uh, if you've been involved in in in, uh, in the network marketing arena, you, you're probably going to think of some companies that are like that. But, you know, people go and buy the inventory and resell it. They do um, home parties, right? There's the party planning business, right? They go into people's home. They have a huge display of products and mm -hmm. the, the goal is to uh, market up a little bit, resell it. And that's where their profit comes from. Gotcha. So um, before you go any further, w network marketing, you said it's the umbrella term. So it's more of a philosophy, not exactly what you would name a company right? A specific yeah. company. So network yeah. marketing is a philosophy that is used in not just direct sales companies and multi-level companies, but real estate companies, Correct. financial brokerages, um, life insurance, uh, the construction industry, nursing it like it's, it's, um, anything that involves, or I should say even car dealerships, right? Anything that involves uh, a corporation sells a product, but they use, um, a group of authorized or licensed individuals to sell that product, right? Is that kind of ideal? And in order Not for that person to sell the product, there is a, um, that person has to go out and find the customer rather than the, the, the corporation itself or, you know, correct me. If well, I'm not wrong. just sell the products, but they have an incentive if they recruit other agents or distributors or okay, promoters, so that's the right? Second component. Okay. Name, then it's a network marketing. When people say I do network marketing, I say, okay, what kind of network market, right? Do you do, do you work with a um, financial planning company or do you do direct sales or is it an MLM or is it consumed direct marketing? You know, like what kind, because there are different characteristic multi-level marketing is multi-level of distributors so the, the the main focus changes a little bit they still have inventory and they still resell the products 
But the main focus is to recruit other distributors that will recruit other distributors and you make money on multi levels of distribution. Okay. Usually the, the comp plan is like a binary where you got to balance different teams, balance different legs, and you earn based on how well you balance them, which I've done it to me is pretty tricky. Usually you have one team running and the other one is sleeping. So it can be frustrating or it's usually like a breakaway. So if they achieve the same level you have, they might break away from you. So there's different things that I didn't understand when I got involved at first. So those are the sort of thing that people should get educated. They should understand, you know, when you go get a job, you want to understand what are my benefits and how much am I getting paid per hour or per week, right? You want to right. understand. You don't go in and say, well, I'll figure it out later. So, and that's what, what many people lack when, when they're getting involved in business, they, they don't pay attention. They go more by emotion. MLM, for instance, is very driven by emotion. There are usually conventions every other month and, and Super Saturdays and all this event. So people are excited, excited, but they don't quite understand yet what they're doing. And unfortunately, that's one of the reasons why so many people hurt because after doing that for a year, you spend thousands of dollars in training and convention and the system. Uh, you spend thousands of dollars in inventory, which you and I know, you know, most people are not going to resell what they buy. They buy right. the big pack because they think they're going to make a ton of money, but then they end up with those products in the garage, in their trunk. And that's why the app, one of the reasons why the FTC is really, really being tough with the network marketing industry right now. And, and they should to protect the consumer because too many people are getting hurt because of that. Gotcha. So to recap here, I'm going to put some notes on the board. So I got in terms of network marketing, that's the, uh, the umbrella term. And within network marketing companies, you have the component of selling a product and recruiting but the there is less of a of a focus on the recruiting part when compared to multi-level marketing it's the whole entire structure in terms of how you get paid is more of a focus on a multi-level distributors or distribution process where i start here right i'm here and i bring two people in I'm going to get paid a certain amount on this level and then a certain amount on this level and then right and I and the incentives get better and better and better uh, from the company's compensation plan so to speak and it's so I don't necessarily have to be selling product to make a lot of money here like I could focus on building a uh, a recruiting agency so to speak a recruiting company and get others to sell the product uh, uh, for me in this multi-level marketing structure. The direct sales structure is where someone, you know, joins a company, they get authorized. Maybe there's a, a licensing process or there's a training process of some sort and you have to purchase a, a bulk of product where you're personally carrying the inventory, storage, storing the product yourself, and you bought it below retail to some degree, right? You, you bought it yes. wholesale, yeah. and then you're instructed or you're given a, a range as to how high or how low you can sell for a profit. And so that involves having uh, uh, parties, like you said, home parties, or even some kind of networking event of some sort where you invite people to you know, a dinner, um, where you know you set up a table. Maybe you go to a trade show, right? There's a bunch of different you know, uh, uh, trade shows out there where you can set up a table, right? You pay $150 or upwards of $1,000 to have a table at a huge chamber of commerce event or networking event or a big uh, growth type of a growth mindset mindset event, right? Like some of the things that we've attended where we see those people at the table and they have all this product laid out and they're basically a store, like a mobile yeah. store. They can be they're, wherever they're they mobile want. store. And all of that costs money and they pay for it. The distributor, Correct. the sales pays and for that. So by the time they realize it might not work, they put a lot of time and money. A lot of into time it. and money. Now gotcha. that's totally correct. The direct sales totally correct. The multi-level marketing is not quite 
the way you mentioned. So let me try okay. to clarify yeah. a little bit because as I said, the FTC is not really pushing like any real business should have real customers that are buying the product because they really need it. So a lot of MLM, they're gonna require you to move products. Doesn't matter how big of a leader you are, you are a store, you are a distributor. Mm. You can't just recruit, recruit, recruit. If it's all about recruiting, FTC it's will crack on that. G gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, right now, if you don't have a 70 or 72% retailers, documented retailers, people that are just shopping, they're not trying to qualify for a check, for a bonus, they're just shoppers. If you don't have that, it's illegal. Okay. So they are going to say, Denzel, you're a distributor. In order to qualify for your bonuses, uh, you know, you're going to have to move at least a thousand dollar worth of product. It could be 500, it could be 2000. Okay. Every company's different but you're gonna have to move that amount and you need to prove us that at least 72 percent of those products ended up in the hands of a consumer all right gotcha. now denzel might be one of the good ones that can sell and he can move the products get his money back make a profit and stay legal right <laughs> within the terms mm -hmm. but some other people which most people they're not good at selling they don't want to sell they're afraid they're just gonna say but i need to document it so they end up saying yeah i did sell it now next month the company allows them to buy another thousand the following month another thousand i mean for how long can they keep doing that so that's one trap that there is in, in, in many, many companies, many deals. And that's one of the reason, sadly, that's one of the reason that we see so many MLMs come and go, right? We've seen companies like uh, Vaisalas and Organo Gold, and those are mentioned because they're in the they're MLM gone. cemetery. <laughs> yeah. They're gone. And some of them did, you know, millions and millions of dollars and they're gone, right? Mm -hmm. Because they didn't have the foundation, the main thing that any healthy store must have, which is real and loyal shoppers, customers, that they're gonna come back because there's value in what you're selling. Okay, okay? so if we're to dissect a multi-level marketing company versus a network marketing company, right? Because I know you said like, network marketing is the umbrella but what would be what would we call a company that's not multi-level marketing where it's more focused on recruiting maybe less less of a real customer how does the new person they get introduced to maybe one or two different types of um, companies in the network marketing space how, how do they evaluate do they can they determine it by the compensation plan? Can they determine it by actually maybe looking up some stats on the companies that might be public? How would we say? Yeah, yeah. Go about? All, all of those, um, you know, MLM is within the network marketing arena. Direct sales is within the network marketing arena. Uh, consumer direct marketing is within the network marketing arena. How do you how do you determine? Yeah, you need to you need to look into a little bit of the compensation plan. Is mm -hmm. it rewarding people mostly to recruit or is it rewarding people mostly to resell the products? What is the monthly qualification? How much products I must move every month? That's a good question. In order Another to get paid, thing, correct? In order to get paid, yeah. Gotcha. Another thing I would, look, just like if Denzel selling me a, a restaurant, I'm gonna ask him to show me the books. Yeah. I'm gonna ask him to show me the report. I'm gonna ask probably for the last few years, maybe five years, right? I wanna know, is it profitable, not profitable, right? What's the cost of the payroll and rent, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, for whatever reason, when people look into a network marketing business, and I'll, I'll generalize now, um, people don't ask those questions. They were like, oh, it's, uh, it's not right to ask for income information or I cannot show you my report, that would be illegal. No, they should show you. How many customers, I wanna see your report. How many, and I've learned that after 10 failures, I learned to do that, okay? But yeah. I didn't before. And, and unfortunately, people, you know, and on the whiteboard, it's always going to look pretty and they're going to show you and, and show you the best scenario. But in reality, when you start building the business, that's when you start really learning how that particular business works. And it might be too late. By then you lost time and money and maybe a few friends. Uh, so, you know, like look at look at the report, how many customers you have. Show me the customers. Okay, I, I don't want to see just people that are buying 
because they're a distributor, they're buying to qualify for a check. I want to be repeat customers. For how long are they shopping with you for? for? For just a couple months or for a couple years? I will look at the product, right? The value and the cost, the value that it brings and the cost, like does it compete with the marketplace? It doesn't, and I think people are, are learning that the hard way, you know, because we've seen so many expensive juices, $50 for a bottle of juice. When you go to any store and you're going to pay five bucks, it, 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 people just create a folklore and it's like, this juice is going to fix you. You're going to be <laughs> healthier, taller, prettier. So it's $50. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't justify anymore. You need to see what's the science behind it. Is yeah. it cost effective? Does it compete with the marketplace? Because at the end of the day, for your business to be healthy and 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 Denzel, I've had a business that I had 1,400 distributors. Most of them would not buy. So I was making a little bit of money with 1,400 distributors. And back then, they weren't even talking about customers. Everybody was a distributor. It was a recruiting game. Wow. So it doesn't help if you don't have a healthy number of shoppers. Your business eventually is going to collapse. Okay. So then here's what we're going to do here. Because you gave some really good details on how the... FTC qualifies a network marketing company essentially, right? Yeah. And they're trying to gauge it to make sure the company is is doing the right thing is being ethical. So can you give that number again on what was it? 72% or or se at least 72%. Yeah, oh, okay. it's 70 or 72%. All right, so let's round it, you know, between 70 and 72% um has to be real customers. Now, yes. Can a customer be a distributor as well or does that not count no, it has to not be a count. retail customer it has to be Just someone customer. that is shopping so you got to see that the retail price makes sense because sometimes the wholesale is okay because you get a discount because you're buying bulk because you're going to resell it but the retail price you know put 30 50 percent more um, maybe doesn't make much sense and it's easy to sell once or twice but you want to think long term you want a customer shopping with you for the next five ten years right Right. So as a real retail customer, they're buying at retail or they're maybe receiving some incentive to continue shopping, so to speak. Right. Like well, if, like going to Publix they, or going to Walmart, like you get coupons and things like that. That's no way. Yeah, issue. they can get. Yeah, they can get coupons, maybe even some freebies, but they have to be retail customers. They're just shoppers and distributors, distributors, distributors right. out of that 72 percent. Gotcha. And they, um, the retail customer does not purchase um, by the bulk and they do no. not receive pricing that the distributor receives. Correct. Right? Okay, cool. And that has to be at least 70, 72%. Okay, so Correct. with that, right, um, what, how does the FTC or, or is there, a, to your knowledge, are they checking these companies on an annual basis every five years? Because I'm assuming, right, like it takes a while for yeah. the company to get taken down. And by the time it gets taken yeah. down, you've got all these victims, right? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, there's thousands of network marketing companies and there's thousands, over a thousand really. new companies every year and over a thousand companies shutting down every year. So there's a constant move of network marketing. So, you know, it's hard for the FTC to look at every single one of them once a year. Yeah. It's hard for the regulators to keep, keep in, yeah. keep up to speed. Gotcha. So that, that's another reason why we have to be smart consumer and smart business people and look into whatever you want to do. Look, there's many great business. I'm just, you know, I'm just giving you some facts to, to get you to think and hopefully understand a little better network marketing, but there are great business out there and you want to have a plan B, especially now with inflation and the way uh, this country is right now, you want to have a plan B, you want to supplement your income. There are amazing ways to earn some extra income from home online. I've been leaving proof of this for now almost 16 years. Okay. The idea is just to give you some more information so you can make a, an educated decision. All right. So you want to take a look at the company because if the company is five years or less, they probably didn't get into the FTC radar. So whatever they're doing, they can charge, they can have expensive products. They can be charging for the system hundreds of dollars a month, right? For their training, their system. They can be selling a one or two or three or $5,000 pack giving people gotcha. lots of products 
um, maybe no, they might not have 72% retailers yet. They can do all of that. And once they grow to a certain amount and it gets to FTC, they will get shut down. Avima is another company that got shut down not long ago. I was out of Arizona. It was growing pretty fast. Lots of young people, right? Great technology tools, expensive juice. And they got to a certain point, they were they were shut down. And it's sad because I've been there. Because you put all that Man. time, all that work to build the team, and and from one day to next, you got nothing. Right? So you gotta you gotta take a good look before you jump in.